Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I am your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A&P today. Specifically, we're going to look at the forearm bones, known as the radius and the ulna. So, let's check it out. Okay, so here we've got a close-up of the forearm. Uh, pretty simply, the ulna is medial. And so I'll mark this with a U to show there's the ulna. Again, medial telling you it should be on the pinky side. And it's going to swing around the trochlea of the humerus. And this forms the majority of what we call the elbow. So if up here I'm circling the bony elbow, and I can draw an arrow down to here and say that is the same thing, right? So what are we looking at here? There's the ulna, and here's the radius. So even though you can't see what the ulna is doing right there, it looks like this right here. I'm circling on the top right. It looks like a back scratcher. It's got a U for ulna, right? That's what the bone looks like when you take it out of the trochlea of the humerus. That's the part that will swing around the trochlea is that mouth or that back scratcher part. So here in the, most of these bony elbow pictures, we only see the back of it because we're looking at it posteriorly. Notice the radius down here, and radius is the one that is lateral, so there's the radius, should be on the thumb side. Notice in anatomical position, I'm drawing the arrows here, how it does not articulate with the humerus the way that the ulna does. The ulna grabs onto it. The radius just puts its tabletop there, right on the edge of a structure called the capitulum. And you can go back and check out the uh, humerus talk if you want to know about those details. So there's what it looks like in anatomical position. The ulna is medial, swings on the trochlea. The radius is lateral and articulates with the capitulum of the humerus. With the bones taken apart like this, we can clearly talk about the parts now. So the proximal end is the one that matters up here. So there's the proximal end. The distal end, of course, will be the other side down here. The olecranon process is right here. It's this top part of the ulna, this top tooth that's sticking out, and that's going to be inside the olecranon fossa of the humerus in anatomical position. Actually, in any position, that olecranon process will remain in the olecranon fossa. The coronoid process is the lower tooth right here. And in anatomical position, it's just sitting, poking out. When you flex the forearm, as I'll show you in the next picture, it's going to fit into the coronoid fossa of the humerus. In between those two, we have the trochlear notch. The U part of the ulna is the trochlear notch. And as it suggests, it will be biting onto the trochlea of the humerus. And that's what allows it to swing around. The styloid process is at the other end. It's at the distal end, and it's this little pokey thing right there, poking out of the bottom of the ulna, styloid process. For the radius, we can play the same game. The proximal end is the one here, and the distal end is the one down here. Again, just like with the ulna, the important part's up top. You often call this the head. I said it kind of looks like a little tabletop or a hammerhead. Some people say it looks kind of like a little mushroom. So there's the head, and then right underneath it would be, as you think, there's the neck. The lump sticking out here, I'll put RT, is the radial tuberosity right there. Styloid process, just like the ulna, there's a pokey out thing right there at the distal end that is the styloid process. So both the radius and the ulna have a styloid process. When you have a, an elbow in anatomical position, and that's what we see right here, but we're seeing it from the front now. We're seeing it from the front. And so we don't see the mouth portion biting down. We only see the lower part. I'll label that in just a moment. But look over here. When we talk about flexion and extension, these are two words that mean something very specific in anatomy and physiology. An extension is when you increase an angle between two bones like that. If you decrease that angle between the two bones, it's called a flexion. So when someone says flex your forearm, it doesn't have anything to do with the muscles really, but it will be a muscle action that pulls the bones closer together. When you do the flexion, 
uh, everything changes about this joint. Check out the bone on the left here. This is a capitulum. This is the trochlea. Okay, above this, capitulum would be the radial fossa here. And then above the trochlea will be the coronoid fossa. And then, of course, sticking out really big like a thumb is the medial epicondyle. And then over here would be the lateral epicondyle. We saw that when we learned about the distal portion of the humerus in the previous talk. But now I want to show you when you do a flex forearm, you're going to do several things. When you flex your forearm, the coronoid process of the ulna, and that's going to be this right here, C, P. There's the coronoid process of the ulna, which means this is the radius, right? And it's going to fit up into this coronoid fossa. The head of the radius, which is right here, I'll put head, will do the same thing, but it will swing up into this radial fossa, just like that. Now down here at the bottom, it mentions something called an interosseous membrane. In some images, you may, you may see a sheet of connective tissue. It's usually drawn whitish or bluish, and it looks very much like this, and you might be tempted to call that a muscle, but it's called an interosseous membrane. That's the connective tissue that goes along their entire length, holding the ulna to the radius. It does allow them to rotate around each other a little bit, but it does bind them together. All right, if you enjoyed that talk, thanks for watching it, and check out some more in the series. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.